All right, before I get back to this one with the variable displacement compressor that I'm gonna be testing using the tester for variable displacement compressors, I wanted to uh, show you something about using the micron gauge and microns. Now you see how this goes up and down, up and down like that? What that is is the vacuum from the vacuum pump is attempting to pull a very low vacuum. But the slight amount of moisture that is trapped in the pores of the metal, in the oil, a little bit of refrigerant in from you know yesterday is bursting and bubbling out. So as the pressure goes down, it reaches a level that say steam. You know why you get 212 degrees, you get steam? Well, under vacuum, water boils and flashes off at steam at a much lower temperature, at ambient temperature. So as it's every time it tries to go down and it gets below that level, then the moisture pops out as a little burst of steam, raising the pressure in the whole entire systems. And that's what you're seeing this up and down. If I were to leave this on overnight, you would see this start happening less frequently and it would not jump up as high. And you would see it gradually going down, down, down. As you can see here, most of them are up there in the up above the 200 and they're slowly starting to stay below 200 and most of them will be below and that'll keep tapering off. And then as you go into tomorrow, if you kept this on here 24 hours, it would almost be a flat line. So now I'm gonna turn off the source of vacuum. So here's kill the source of vacuum and we'll just have the hoses on there and you get contamination from your hoses cause your hoses, rubber hoses, outgas moisture and refrigerant that's trapped in them because you use them all the time. So they are a source of contaminant that'll actually make your uh, pressure decay go up actually higher because you're not supposed to use refrigerant hoses, but something's better than nothing. It's only automotive. We're not in commercial refrigeration. This is not a cryogenic unit. It's not a home residential unit. So let's kill the vacuum. And watch, see, as I turn this down there, I just killed the vacuum. And now it'll probably go up to seven, 800, 900 microns, depending on the moisture level that is in the system. And as you see here, it looks like it's gonna taper off somewhere around close to 800 microns. And so vacuum inside your whole system has to stabilize and, and stabilize out. Uh, I'm trying to think of an analogy. You'll see this go down, sometimes you see them go up and sometimes you see them move a little bit. They're not like a perfectly flat line. It doesn't go perf up on this scenario, but it's kind of like water inside a long jug or a long pipe and you have a little bit of water and you swooshed it a little bit and you have a lot more water up on this side than this side but gravity it'll go back and forth and stable out because, until it becomes steady and then the water doesn't move no more um, doing your micron level is roughly the same kind of thing so we have a slight tick up and like i said it would be up there in the 800 level when it levels out and if you watch this over a period of hours you can tell when the moisture is out. Now, if this was heavily, heavily contaminated with moisture, it would just keep on climbing up to around 3,000, 3,200, 3,400 microns, and then it would start leveling out and go flat line. And that tells you, you have a ton of moisture in the system. If the micron level number just kept on slowly going up over a period of hours, most likely you have a leak somewhere. But looking for leaks under vacuum is a very, very poor way of looking for leaks because just a thin film of oil between a crack can seal a leak and it won't leak. So that's all I wanted to show you there. Let's see if I can't skim back a little bit way. Yeah, it just jumps back. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on a vacuum a little longer and I'm gonna fill this up and we'll come back after we have this filled up. But I just wanted to show this to you because I'm trying to get across to some of the automotive guys on how microns work and that taking it through hoses isn't the best way. It shouldn't be considered at all, but money, when you don't have a lot of money to buy a separate two or $300 good micron gauge to isolate your system and isolation valves, another $80 and stuff like that. If you're gonna have one system, well, the micron gauge is built inside here. You have software and this is a good starting point that's economical because you get all the data recording software of your superheat subcooling your pressures temperatures everything you can hand over to a customer or diagnose somebody else's work that came from a shop all in one package and then if you ever decide later on hey i want to know more about this micron stuff i want to do better job 
I want to know when I have all the moisture out of the system. That's when you spend the extra three hundred dollars for a dedicated micron gauge or one of or one of the cheaper ones. It doesn't have to be a hundred dollar one. And uh, Accutech Tools, of course, uh, one of the better manufacturers. And uh, that's it. All right, I'll see you on the next video on this after I get some charge in here.